Hello everyone. Welcome to the playlist of Power Electronics. In this session, I'll be discussing Power BJT. As you know that Power BJT is nothing but Power Bipolar Junction Transistor. So I would like to discuss what do we mean by Power BJT? Then what is the structure of Power BJT? Different modes of operation. Switching characteristics of Power BJT. What are the major switching limits of Power BJT? Then uh, the numerical examples and finally the applications. So these are my outlines of presentation. Since it is too lengthy topic, I am going to divide into three videos. In the first uh, video, I am going to discuss about what is power BJT, then structure and the modes of operation. And in separate video, I am going to plan the explanation of switching characteristics of power BJT. Then the third video, I am going to plan switching limits, then some numerical example and finally the applications of Power BJT. First of all, let's get understand what is Power BJT and the basic structure of Power BJT. Uh, you know that in the signal level type BJT, uh, it cannot able to handle high power. But in case of Power BJT, it is suitable for high power handling capability. So high power application you can able to use power BJT especially for the inverter. Okay, you must have heard about uh, uh, inverter, single phase uh, inverter. You can able to use power BJT for that purpose. And also uh, we can able to say that it offers high voltage resistance uh, in the off conditions other than the conventional type of BJT. And uh, it is having the vertical structure and uh, it can able to handle high current that is another speciality so we can call it as the current control device so please note down this point very important uh, power bjt is a current control device okay so uh, we can able to see the symbol of power bjt in this manner so there are three terminals base uh, collector and emitter okay so there are two type of bjt uh, this is actually called NPN type power BJT. NPN. Okay. Uh, so you can say NPN. Okay. And uh, this is actually called PNP type uh, power BJT. You can mention it as PNP. There are two type of uh, BJTs are available. So why it is called NPN and PNP? Based on the difference of this arrow, we can see the direction of this current C. It is outward to towards the emitter. Okay. See the arrow, it is outward. Where in case of NPN transistor arrow is in, uh, so PNP transistor arrow is inward. So that is the first difference. NPN arrow is outward and PNP arrow is towards uh, in this direction. That is the main difference. One more thing. NPN type transistors are most commonly preferred. It is preferred uh, other than PNP. Because in type of, in case of NPN transistor, uh, electron, you know that the electrons are the uh, majority carrier device. Therefore, mobility wise NPN is much better. So, uh, in case of PNP transistor, holes are the majority carrier holes. Therefore, we can, uh, it is not suitable and uh, the speed of operation is very less in case of PNP type uh, power BJT. So, NPN transistors, you can able to see. Uh, the NPN transistors are most commonly used. That is an important question in Viva and interviews. Next, I want to ask one more question. Is it a controlled device or uncontrolled device? Of course, it is a controlled device. Why it is called a controlled device? Because in order to turn on a power BJT, so you have to pass continuous base current. So base is a control terminal. Okay. So this is actually the output IC. IC is the output that means collector current. So you can say that it's a control device. In order to turn on power BJT, we need to pass continuous base current. Okay. So uh, it is called a controlled device. It's also known as current control device. Okay. Now let's familiar the structure of power BJT. First of all, you can mark the three important terminals. What are the three important terminals? The first one is emitter. You can mark it as emitter. Uh, then you can see the base terminal. Here base terminal. And this will be the collector terminal. These are the three terminals. 
Now I would like to mark the different layers. First let me mark this is your N plus layer. Okay. Uh, now let me mark P layer. And we have N minus layer here. And finally we can able to see N plus layer. N plus layer. Okay. So these are the how many layers? These are the four layers. Okay. Four layer. It is a four layer device. And also we have to say that. Uh, this is one of the important layer that is called collector drift layer. You can call it just drift layer also. Collector drift layer. So that decides the high power handling capability. The As I increase the dimension of the drift layer, the voltage handling capability also will be improved. Voltage and current handling capability. That means you can able to express in terms of power handling capability that is getting improved. Okay. So that's the importance of drift layer. The thickness will be varying in between uh, 50 to 200 micrometer. So 50 to uh, 200 micrometer. That means 50 to 200 you can multiply in terms of meter also. 200 into 10 to the power minus 6 meter. And also uh, you can able to mention uh, the thickness. Here also you can able to mention. This will be around uh, uh, 10, 10 micrometer. 10 micrometer approximately and uh, here we can able to mention approximately up to uh, 5 to 20 micrometer 5 to 20 micrometer this area okay and uh, the collector drift layer that varies depends on the designer uh, they can able to change it okay so this will be almost 200 to 250 micrometer 250 micrometer so we can able to identify the different layers layer 1 layer 2 layer 3 and uh, fourth layer okay and uh, the collector is connected to n plus layer see look at this collector is connected to n plus layer and the emitter is also connected to n plus layer so that is very clear okay and regarding the doping level, so in order to improve the conduction, we are going to add additional material that is called doping. Okay. So in case of uh, the base layer here, in case of the base layer, so what is the speciality of doping? It is medium doped or you can call it as moderately doped. So and also we have to say that here it is lightly doped. Light doped. Light doping is uh, necessary for the collector drift layer. Where in case of base region, in this layer, it is highly doped. Okay. So, these are the basic information. And uh, uh, it is a additional points. That means collector drift layer. If, if you inspect in case of normal BJT, signal level BJT, you can be able to identify the drift layer. Okay. So, this is one of the additional point. In interview, you may... You, uh, you may ask one question. Interview, uh, you might have asked one question that uh, what is the difference between power BJT and signal BJT? In case of power BJT, the drift layer is present, where in case of signal BJT, drift layer will not be there. So that you are supposed to explain during the interview or viva. Uh, let me ask one more question. Is there any issue if we increase the drift layer? Yes, there is an issue uh, as the drift layer increases. The switching losses, there are probability of increasing the switching losses. And also the dissipation uh, of heat also will be getting increased. So therefore heat sink requirement is very essential. Heat sink is very essential uh, for power, power BJT. In case of signal level BJT, heat sink requirement is not essential. That point you have to highlight. Now I would like to discuss uh, the modes of operation. There are four modes of operation in case of uh, power BJT. So please note down four modes. In case of uh, signal BJT, there are three modes. Okay, there are three modes. In case of power BJT, there are four modes of operation such as hard saturation mode or it is also known as deep saturation mode, then quasi saturation, then active region and cutoff region. So these are the four modes of operation. Now let me discuss about hard saturation. The first mode is called hard saturation. Please note down. It is also known as deep saturation. 
So uh, in case of signal BJT only one saturation mode is available but in case of power BJT uh, one is hard saturation another one is known as uh, quasi saturation. First let me discuss about what do you mean by hard saturation. So you have to consider the output current you can call it as a collector current you know base emitter collector these are the three terminals of uh, IGBT you have to plot a characteristics that means IC versus VC VC means uh, emitter to collector voltage IC means uh, collector current so uh, let me talk about the first mode so everybody please consider the graph here uh, this mode is known as you can see uh, so this is a particular mode so straight line you can see a straight line yeah so this mode is actually called uh, quasi saturation uh, hard uh, this mode is known as hard saturation so please mark it this is your hard saturation. Here what is the speciality? The thing is as I increase uh, VB, sorry, as I increase VCE, so as I increase VCE, there is a drastic growth of the collector current. So that is a speciality of this particular mode. Here we can say that the value of resistance is minimum uh, in hard saturation or deep saturation mode. The value of resistance is minimum, thereby the switching losses. So power switching losses will be minimum in this in this region. Okay, yeah, and uh, we can able to say that it is suitable for low frequency application. Low frequency application. So these are the speciality of the hard saturation or deep saturation. Please mark this is your. Uh, hard saturation or deep saturation mode. So please note down these particular points. Now I would like to discuss about the quasi saturation region. So this is your quasi saturation region. You can able to point out. This region is known as quasi saturation region. Uh, the speciality is number one. It operates in lower power. Okay. Lower power. The second point is it is closely similar to hard saturation. But the difference is uh, it, uh, it is suitable for high frequency application high frequency application and uh, the power loss is minimum power loss power loss is also very less and uh, device offer less resistance in this particular mode the device will be operating uh, less resistance and uh, this is due to lightly adopted collector drift layer I have spoken already about the drift layer and because of that uh, drift layer this region will be existing this region is generally called as uh, quasi saturation mode second mode that is called quasi saturation mode you can note down second point this is your second point quasi saturation mode so far we discussed about uh, hard saturation mode and second point we discussed about quasi saturation mode so please remember that uh, in both Hard saturation and uh, quasi saturation uh, emitter based junction will be forward bias junction and uh, collector based junction is also for, forward bias. So this speciality you have to remember. Emitter based junction and the collector based junction should be forward biased in case of both uh, hard saturation, hard saturation and uh, the quasi saturation region quasi uh, saturation region please note on this point okay this is important now let us discuss about the active region uh, in case of active region you know that emitter base junction look at this uh, base emitter junction base emitter junction will be forward biased and the collector base junction will be reverse biased so can you point out where is active region yes this is your active region you can see this region see let, let me point out so i made a cross mark look at this so ib5 then ib4 ib3 ib2 ib0 where we can able to say that uh, ib5 value will be highest like this ib4 ib3 ib2 ib1 what is your conclusion the conclusion is as I increase uh, VCE, so as I increase VCE, with respect to the increase in value of base current, the collector current is getting increased. So as I increase uh, VCE, 
So collector current uh, increases with respect to the base current. So base current will be IB. So I have written as IB1, IB2, IB3, IB4, IB5. So that is the speciality of the active region. So most of the application especially amplification, voltage regulation, these applications mainly BJTs are used in active mode. Remember that. It is very important for all the type of examination. Uh, where does uh, active region use? Active region uh, uses uh, in case of power BJT uh, where it can be used for uh, high, uh, the amplification, regulation etc. Okay. Hope you understood. See, look at this. As I increase VCG, for different levels of IB, the collector current is also getting increased. Look at this very carefully. See. So, this is actually called an active region. Now, let us have a discussion on the cutoff region. In case of cutoff region, it is very clear that IB, IB will be 0 only. IB is equal to 0. And also, there won't be any collector current flow. That means, the output current will be 0 only. That is also can be observed here. See, look at this. As I increase VCE, there won't be any growth of output current, collector current. That is clearly uh, we can able to observe. Here, uh, both emitter base tension, emitter base tension, I will be writing EB and the collector base tension both are in reverse biased condition. That is another speciality. And uh, once I increase VCE beyond the limit, once I increase VCE beyond the limit, let me mark it as VSUS. What is going to happen? You can able to say that the collector current is, there is a uh, collector current flows, but that collector current flows uh, in the, in, what I can say, uh, in a constant manner. But that is not good for power VJT. So, you can able to see, once it crosses the breakdown voltage, B, S, U, S, uh, it, go, it, uh, it becomes constant, collector current become constant like this. Okay, so, we, uh, so the value of VC, the value of VC, that is getting constant. Okay, the VC value can able to see that is getting constant. That uh, point you can able to see. But there is a variation in the collector current, but uh, VC will become uh, constant. See, at this point VC is constant. Again, if you are trying to increase, you will be getting the different breakdown regions. See, these are the different breakdown regions. You can able to see very clearly, uh, different breakdown region, which is uh, due to uh, the two type of breakdown. One is uh, BBCO, another one is uh, B, V, C, B, uh, B, uh, V, C, B, O. Okay. B, V, C, E, O and uh, B, V, uh, B, V, C, B, O. Okay. These are the two breakdown which you can able to see that. Okay. It is very clearly observable. Now, let me conclude. In cutoff region, the uh, junction, how the junctions are biased, you can see the collector current will be zero and uh, I, B, O also will be zero. Uh, the thing is, at a particular point, uh, the, uh, the value of VC become constant and also again if you are keep on increasing the breakdown will be taken place in this manner. So this is regarding uh, the cutoff region of power BJT. So in this session we have discussed about what is power BJT, what is power BJT and uh, the basic features of power BJT then vertical structure and finally I have explained the modes of operation of power BJT. In the coming session I am going to discuss the switching characteristics of power BJT. Thank you for watching this video.